Here are the top stories for today, February 4, 2020. The World Health Organization says it is satisfied with the Philippine government's response to the novel coronavirus threat. President Duterte urges the public to stop discriminating against Chinese nationals amid the spread of the 2019 and COVID. Authorities quarantine five persons who came in contact with the first two cases of Encovi in Dumaguete. And the government urges youth leaders in Mindanao to play a more active role in peace building. Good day, I'm William Theo. Welcome to the PNA Newsroom. Amid criticism over the Philippine government's efforts to prevent the spread of the novel coronavirus, the World Health Organization thinks the government is doing a good job responding to the evolving situation. World Health Organization representative in the Philippines, Dr. Rabindria Abia Singh, said they recommend the actions taken by the government in strengthening its capacities to detect cases. Abeya Singh explained the Philippine government has been implementing the most stringent measures in relation to the relative risk and the pattern of movement of people going in and out of the country. He assured that the Philippine government is working very closely with the WHO as new evidences emerge and after the Encovi outbreak was declared as a public health emergency of international concern. WHO is confident that at this point of time, there is no community spread of the disease as per evidence that is currently available within the Philippines. We want to reiterate that the two cases that have been reported here in the Philippines were both from travelers who originated from Wuhan, who actually traveled with early signs of the disease. So. Uh, we commend the government of the Philippines for the measures it's implementing and we work in partnership with them to strengthen their response capacities. Following a report made by Thailand's health ministry that a Chinese woman infected with a virus showed a dramatic improvement after being treated with a cocktail of antivirals used to treat influenza and HIV. Dr. Abia Singh said the improvement of one patient does not constitute evidence. The WHO is said to share interim guidance with member states on how to prevent and control infection, how to manage cases, and how to do proper diagnosis of suspected patients through laboratory testing. WHO will work more closely with the authorities in Thailand but also we are continuing to work with the authorities in China and with other research institutions to build evidence of what practices should be adopted by affected countries to improve case management, to prevent the transmission. Uh, and uh, no sooner there is clear evidence of what works, WHO will share that. Meanwhile, President Rodrigo Duterte assures that the government has the situation under control and that rumors that the health department is withholding information to avoid causing panic is not true. In a press conference on Monday, Duterte said the government is not hiding anything as it was useless pretending that there were fewer persons under investigation for the 2019 and COVID. Duterte said the virus should not be a cause for panic since the government has the whole situation under control. Earlier, Defense Secretary Delfin Lorenzana bared that the DOH is eyeing the Drug Rehabilitation Center in Fort Magsaysay, Nueva Ecija as a possible quarantine facility for Filipinos returning from Wuhan, China. This government will never hide anything. If it says that you're going to die tomorrow because of this conflict, it's a contagion all over, we will tell you that. It's not a treasure. It is not something of value to us. It does not contribute to the national wealth. Why should we hide? The response of the people from the initial reports of coronavirus was almost hysterical when there was really no need for it, actually. 
And if there is really a virus going around, why do you have to be spiritual? Why don't you just go to the hospital and have yourself treated? President Rodrigo Duterte also called on the public to refrain from showing hate against Chinese nationals after two cases of novel coronavirus were confirmed in the country. Duterte said it was not good to show hostility or aversion to Chinese nationals simply because it is where the virus originated from. He also frowned upon calls for Chinese to return to their homeland. I will bar the Chinese from entering. The answer, of course, is no. That is an utter uh, disrespect to a, a human being. At kung meron man, if there are Chinese found positive, and we do not want them to travel to further aggravate the situation, uh, we can assure the Chinese government that we too will help. And this kind of uh, Mentioning the Chinese and blaming them, it's like a xenophobia. You, you eat anything that is Chinese, it is not good. More measures are being implemented to prevent the spread of the deadly 2019 coronavirus in the country. Janice Cave tells us more. Philippine offshore gaming operators, or POGO, have agreed to cooperate with local health offices to establish preventive measures against the disease. POGO establishments, as well as hotels, will be included in intensified inspections to ensure compliance with local health and sanitation codes. Meanwhile, the Department of National Defense and its attached agencies said they are more than ready for any task to be given by the Department of Health as part of the ongoing efforts to contain the 2019 novel coronavirus. The DOH is looking at the possibility of using the naval station at Caballo Island of Cavite and the Fort Magsaysay Drug Rehabilitation Center in Nueva Ecija as a possible quarantine area for returning overseas Philippine workers from Wuhan, China. And for those who are affected by the travel ban to China, the Labor Department is giving away 10,000 pesos monetary assistance for OFWs. Acting Dole Secretary Renato Ebarle said, aside from cash aid, stranded Filipino workers can stay at the OWA halfway house while waiting for their trip back to their respective provinces. Hundreds of OFWs bound mostly for Hong Kong and Macau were stranded at the Manila airports on Monday following the travel ban imposed by President Rodrigo Duterte. For the PNA Newsroom, I'm Janice Cave. Still to come, the Senate tackles the government's response on the 2019 novel coronavirus. Authorities quarantined five persons who came in contact with the first two cases of Encovi in Dumaguete. More on these when the PNA Newsroom continues. Kalma lang. Yan ang paalala ni PCOO Secretary Martin Andanar kasunod ng pangamba sa pagkalat ng sakit na 2019 Novel Coronavirus. Ayon pa sa kalihim, on top of the situation, ang Department of Health o DOH, katuwang ang iba't ibang research agencies at mga otoridad. Nakikipagtulungan din ang bansa sa health at research authorities sa Australia, Japan at China para alamin kung ano pang dapat gawin ngayong may isa ng kumpirmadong kaso ng NCOV sa ating bansa. Dagdag pa niya, mas pinaigting na ngayon ng bansa ang containment at precautionary measures para hindi na lumobo pa ang bilang ng mga mahawaan ng sakit na ito. Naka-alerto rin ang Customs, Immigration at Quarantine Bureau para bantayan ang pagpasok ng mga travelers mula sa mga lugar na may NCOV sa China at kung sakaling kailangang ilika sa mga OFWs doon. Nakahanda rin ang pamahalaan para sa kanila. Sa katunayan, Ani Andanar, binuksan ang coronavirus hotline ng Pilipinas sa China para agarang matulungan ng mga OFWs doon. Pinayuhan din niya ang lahat na subaybayan ang mga anunsyo ng DOH. Nagpaalala rin siya ng proper hygiene para hindi mahawaan ng sakit. Pwede ring agad makipagugnayan sa mga barangay health centers kung makakaramdam ng sintomas ng 2019 and COVID. Sa anumang oras at pangyayari, dapat laging handa. 
Ito po si Benji Duranco. President Duterte has approved allocating 2.25 billion pesos to protect health workers who will care for patients infected with novel coronavirus. During the Senate inquiry on Tuesday, Health Secretary Francisco Duque III said the budget will be for the procurement of protective equipment for health workers. Health and Demography Chairman Senator Christopher Lawrence Go provides a public hearing of the Encovi virus together with PCOO Secretary Martin Andanar, among others. The lone manufacturer of surgical masks in the country has committed to produce 2 million pieces of masks per month. DTI Secretary Ramon Lopez on Monday said that Medtech's pledge to supply 100,000 pieces of surgical masks this week and 400,000 per week thereafter to meet rising local demand. As of Friday, major drug stores Mercury Drug and South Star Drug reported to DTI that they ran out of stock, while Watson still had stocks and were deployed nationwide. There was a sudden surge of demand for surgical masks late last week after the Department of Health confirmed the first case of the novel coronavirus. The local government of General Santos City is expecting a surge in tourist arrivals and trade linkages that key areas in central Luzon with the formal opening of direct flights on Monday with the Clark International Airport. The inaugural flight chartered by MAG Travel and Tours left the city airport past 10 a.m. Monday. A 50-seater plane will initially serve the General santos Clark route with the two return flights per week, specifically every Tuesday and Sunday. Leonard Flores, chief of the City Economic Management and Cooperative Development Office, said MAG Travel has started negotiations with Royal Air Philippines for the opening of additional flights. He said they expect to see a lot of local and foreign visitors to visit the city and other parts of Soxargen via Clark. Rosana Contreras, executive director of the Soxargen Federation of Fishing and Allied Industries, meanwhile said the opening of the air route is a huge boost to the city's thriving tuna industry. Contreras said tuna producers could eventually use it as a primary route in bringing their products to the greater part of Luzon. Following orders to trace those who have come in contact with the first two patients of novel coronavirus, health officials in the region have monitored several persons suspected of having symptoms related to the infection. More on this from Lade Kapagani. A 30-year-old woman from Leyte with recent travel history to China is now being closely monitored at a regional hospital here after manifesting symptoms similar to the 2019 novel coronavirus. DOH Eastern Visayas Regional Director Minerva Molon said the person under investigation sought consultation on Saturday, just a few days after her arrival from a tour in Hong Kong and Macau in China on January 21. Two days earlier, a 36-year-old American from one province was released from the Eastern Visayas Regional Medical Center following confinement. In Pampanga, six other PUIs for 2019 novel coronavirus were isolated at Jose B. Lingad General Memorial Hospital. The six PUIs include five Chinese missionaries from Myanmar and one Filipino woman who came from Hong Kong. Meanwhile, authorities met locators inside Clark Freeport and required those who went outside the country to impose self-quarantine. In Dumaguete City, at least five Filipinos who came in contact with the country's first two cases of the 2019 NCOV are now admitted at the Negros Oriental Provincial Hospital after coming down with flu-like symptoms. The five include two from the hotel in the city and two from the resort outside of the capital where the Chinese man and woman had stayed and a seatmate in one of the flights that they took. They are now being given the proper treatment for flu-like symptoms such as cough, colds, and flu. 
Meanwhile, the Department of Health in Caraga said it is monitoring 16 persons amid the novel coronavirus threat. In an advisory issued on Monday, the 16 persons under monitoring do not have symptoms of 2019 NCOV, but they have the history of travel to China in the last 14 days. The agency is also urging the residents inside the area to remain calm but vigilant. For the PNA Newsroom, I'm Laid Kabagani. Up next... The government urges youth leaders in Mindanao to play a more active role in peace building. And local artists showcase their creativity as Ilocos Norte celebrates its 202nd founding anniversary. The PNA Newsroom returns after these reminders. Matapos ang unang kumpirmadong kaso ng novel coronavirus sa bansa, nagpalabas na ng kautusan si Pangulong Rodrigo Roa Duterte ng travel ban sa pagpasok ng mga Chinese nationals mula sa Hubei province, lalo na mula sa Wuhan City ang nagsisilbing ground zero ng NCOV. Mariin namang inabaysuhan ng Department of Health ang publiko na magsuot ng tamang mask, lalo na sa mga matataong lugar. Sundin ang wastong paghuhugas ng kamay at panatilihing malinis ang kapaligiran. Samantala, idineklara na ng World Health Organization na under state of global health emergency ang NCOV matapos makumpirma ang virus sa labing walong bansa. Para sa latest updates, bisitahin lamang ninyo ang Laging Handa Facebook page. Pati na rin ang PCOO, RTVM, PNA, RP1, IBC at DOH. Alamin at makialam, huwag magpapabiktima sa fake news. Ito si Benji Durango, nagpapaalala na sa anumang oras at pangyayari, dapat laging handa. The Office of the Presidential Advisor on the Peace Process, or OPAP, is calling on the youth of Mindanao to act as agents of peace and development. Ariel Hernandez co-chairperson of the Joint Normalization Committee, encouraged the youth to help build a culture of peace and development. Hernandez said, Mindanao's youth come from a lineage of visionary leaders who have aspired and worked hard for a more just, peaceful, and progressive Mindanao. Hernandez highlighted the various efforts being carried out by OPAP through its various peace tables. He also reminded them to be uh, vigilant against spoilers of peace and emphasized that OPAP's initiatives are anchored on preventing extremism through conflict-sensitive and peace-promoting practices. Youth leaders participated in the three-day Our Mindanao Summit 2020, which culminated on February 1st. Organized by Equal Access International Philippines, the summit provided them an opportunity to discuss means to push for a more peaceful and progressive Mindanao. And in our foreign news, Chinese provinces and municipalities report that more patients infected with the novel coronavirus have recovered and left hospitals. A total of 37 patients, including one age 88, who had been infected with the virus in central China's Hubei province, have recovered and been discharged on Sunday afternoon. Northwest China's Gansu province also reported its first batch of two patients recovering from the novel coronavirus Sunday. Meanwhile, a 57-year-old patient was also cured and discharged in southwest China's Sichuan province. He is the province's first patient who was in severe or critical situations and discharged from hospital after recovery. China's Tianjin municipality also reported its first patient recovering from the virus on Sunday. China's National Health Commission said patients can be discharged when the symptoms are alleviated, the body temperature remains at a normal range for at least three days, and the nucleic acid test shows a negative result twice. Local artists in Ilocos Norte displayed their talents as the province celebrated its foundation anniversary. The creative showcase featured Ilocano creativity aimed to inspire others to follow their passions and dreams. Joyce Kudis has the story. 
Taking pride in its homegrown artists, the provincial government of Ilocos Norte honored on Monday its growing number of creative artists at the Open Capital, one of the highlights of the 202nd Foundation Anniversary of the province. Featuring at least 20 Ilocano visual artists who joined the creative festivity, each of them shared their inner passion for beauty while inspiring others to reach out for their dreams and aspirations too. The declaration of open capital initiated by then Governor and now Senator Aimee is being continued as a tradition by her son, Governor Matthew Joseph Manota. This year's celebration invited Ilocano creatives who share their expertise to the audience, mostly composed of students from the different schools of the province. Last year, it featured to Ilocos children about the various offices of the provincial government, what are the services and programs being offered, and how it runs as an organization led by the governor, vice governor, provincial board members, and the department heads and staff, among others. Aside from the Creatives Fest, the 21 towns and two cities of Ilocos Norte also displayed their unique products for sale to visitors. For the PNA Newsroom, I'm Joy Scudis. Here is the latest in our community billboard. The 2020 Andre Stenin International Press Photo Contest is now accepting submission of entries. The contest was launched by TV channel Rosia Segondia under the aegis of the Russian Commission for UNESCO. The contest aims to promote and support young photojournalists aged between 18 and 33. The 2020 competition includes four categories, namely Top News, Sports, My Planet, and Portrait, A Hero of Our Time. One single entry and one photo series can be submitted in each of the four categories. Aside from cash prizes, the contest gives young photojournalists the opportunity to show their work at Russian and international venues. Photo series and single photos can be submitted through the stainincontest.ru website in Russian, English, and Chinese. Submissions will be accepted until February 29, 2020. And here's another look at today's biggest stories. The World Health Organization says it is satisfied with the Philippine government's response to the novel coronavirus threat. President Duterte urges the public to stop discriminating against Chinese nationals amid the spread of the 2019 and COVID. Authorities quarantine five persons who came in contact with the first two cases of COVID in Dumaguete. And the government urges youth leaders in Mindanao to play a more active role in peace building. Thank you for watching another episode of the PNA Newsroom. To check out more news content, check our webpage or head on to the Philippine News Agency's Facebook and Twitter accounts. For more stories about the government and how it serves Filipinos, look for these hashtags in all of our social media platforms and websites. We are shown on the pages of the PCOO and its attached agencies. Also, watch us on television on PTV4 and IBC13. And that's your daily dose of the biggest stories that you need to know. From the PNA Newsroom, I am William Theo. Good day.